Okay, so in this video we're going to look at a couple of applications where we have logarithmic or exponential functions. Let's read this first one. It says the total spent on research and development by the federal government in the United States during 1995 to 2007 can be approximated by this function s of t equals 7.4 natural log of t plus 3. So you can see that I've got a log in my um, model here. Okay, billion dollars, and they also tell us this function is only valid for t's between 5 and 19. Um, they also tell us that t is the number of years since 1990. Okay, so they ask us for two things. So first they ask us what was the total spent in 2005, and then they ask us how fast was that total spent in 2005 increasing. So we have a couple of keywords here, how fast, and increasing, and when I see those, I think rate of change. So um, we are typically asked for to find a couple of things, and they either ask us to find y values or instantaneous rate of changes, and this first question, they're asking us to find a y value, and the second question, they're asking us to find the instantaneous rate of change. The next thing to think about is that both of these have that 2005 in it, so it might be good to know what value of t 2005 is. So they tell us that 1990 corresponds to t equals 0. Let's see, 2005 is 15 years after 1990, so this is going to be t equals 15. Okay, so the first question, the, what was the total spent in 2005, they're asking us to just find s of 15. Okay, so we're going to do this on our calculator. So when you turn your calculator on, you're usually in this home screen, and so I'm going to press y equals, and I have my function here in my y1. So I have 7.4 natural log of x plus 3. One thing to notice is I have closed that parenthesis on my log there. Okay, now I'm not actually going to graph quite yet, but I want to go back out to the home screen, so I'm going to go second, quit, and we can use that y1 just um, the way we use function notation. So we can say, we can ask the calculator to find y1 at 15. So to get to y1, you go over here and you press the vars key, you right arrow to y vars, you choose that first option of function, and then we want y1. We're going to put the 15 in parentheses there, and there's our s of 15. Okay, so let's round to the nearest tenth. So that would be 23.0. And then our units here are billion dollars. So I'm going to put a, a dollar sign here, and then I'm going to put the word billion. Okay. And usually they want us to answer in a sentence if they ask us in a sentence. So let's, let's go ahead and start writing a sentence. Okay, so you can see here I have the first part of the sentence. It says, in 2005, the total spent on research and development in the U.S., we could say by the federal government, um, was $23.0 billion. Before we finish our sentence, let, let's answer that second question. So in the second question, they're asking us for an instantaneous rate of change. So that means we need to know the derivative. So let's calculate the derivative of our function. So s prime of t... That 7.4 is just a constant multiplier, so it goes along for the ride. The derivative of this natural log is 1 over t, and the derivative of this constant here is just 0. So we end up with 7.4 over t. So if we plug in 15, we're going to have 7.4 over 15, and putting this into our calculator, we get approximately 0 0.5. Okay, so the units here are um, the units of S, so that's billion dollars, and then per year. 
Okay, so let's um, finish up our sentence. So we know that in 2005, the total spent on um, by the federal government on R&D in the U.S. was 23.0 billion, and it was increasing at the rate of 0.5 billion dollars per year. Okay, so we have a second part to this question. In the second part, it says, is the rate of change of spending um, increasing or decreasing? Okay, so we're going to look at this in two different ways. So first, we're going to look at this algebraically. So we have S prime of t is 7.4 divided by t. And they're asking us, as we move from 5 to 19, is this instantaneous rate of change getting bigger or is it getting smaller? Is it increasing or is it decreasing? So if we think about this, like if we just plug in some numbers here, 7.4 over 5, uh, maybe look at 7.4 over 10 and 7.4 over 19, as this denominator gets bigger, these numbers get smaller. So we're decreasing. So that instantaneous rate of change is decreasing. Let's also look at this um, using the graph. So I'm going to put the graph up here. First putting it, our function into y1, which we already have. Next we're going to choose our window. So we're looking from 5 up to 19. And if you remember what our y value was, for 15, our y value there was 23. So let's try going from say 0 up to 30. And I'm going to make my y scale, my tick marks, distance between tick marks be 5. Okay, so this is the graph of our function. And what I want to do is I want to look at graphically, how can I tell that the rate of change in spending is decreasing? We know it's decreasing algebraically, but let's look at how we can tell that from the graph. So we're looking at this graphically. Okay, now I have taken that graph that you see over here, and I'm going to put it right here so that we can draw on it. Okay. So if we're talking about the instantaneous rate of change, how is the rate of change increasing or decreasing? They're asking us is how are those slopes changing as we go from 5 to 19. So if we draw in tangent lines here, this tangent line is fairly flat, but the slope is positive. And as we move to the right here, our tangent lines get more and more flat, but still have positive slope. And over here, that slope is almost zero. So we go from a positive number that's not very big down to zero. So do you see how we're decreasing? So our answer here is that we're decreasing. Okay, now let's look at this next one. It says the average price of a two-bedroom apartment in downtown New York City during the real estate boom from 1994 to 2004 can be approximated by this function um, p of t. And here our p of t has an exponential function. The units are million dollars and this model is valid for years um, from 0 to 10, so that corresponds to that 1994 to 2004. Okay, now just like the last problem, they might ask us about a y value, and they might ask us for an instantaneous rate of change. So take a moment and see if you can figure out which question is the y value and which question is the instantaneous rate of change. Okay, so here, hopefully you gave this a shot, but here we have the average, they're asking us what is the average price of a two-bedroom house, a two-bedroom apartment in downtown New York City in 2003. Okay, so that is asking us for just 
that y value. So this is question one. And then question two, there's that keyword there. How fast was that price um, increasing? Those two keywords that tell us in question two, they're asking us for the instantaneous rate of change. Okay, so if they're asking us for a y value, we just need to know which y value. So 2003 is going to correspond to the year t equals 9. So they're asking us for p of 9. We're going to do that same process. I'm going to put my p into my y1 and I'm going to find y1 of 9. And then in our second question, they're asking us what p prime of 9 is. So I need to know what p prime of t is. So I'm going to take the derivative of this. So the derivative of that is going to be 0.33 e to the 0.16 t. That's because the derivative of an exponential is just itself, but I need to multiply by the derivative of that exponent. So the derivative of 0.16t just gives us 0.16. And if I um, multiply those two numbers, I get 0.0528e to the 0.16t. Okay. So let's um, find those two values. So here you can see I have my function in my y1. I go out to my home screen and I'm going to go vars, y vars, function y1 at 9. And I get this is approximately equal to, so let's round to the nearest hundredth this time, 1.39. And then um, if I plug in my 9 into my derivative, I get that my p prime of 9 is approximately equal to 0.22. Another way to find that derivative is to use that derivative function on our calculator. So we could go math, scroll down here till we see n deriv, press enter. Here we're going to have d dx. We're taking the derivative of y1. And we're looking at x equals 9. If you have the older style calculator, it's, the notation's going to look a little different. I'll show you what it's going to look like. And see how we got the same number? So the older style calculator, this is what the notation is going to look like. n deriv, you have y1 comma x comma 9. Okay, so let's um, put the units in. We didn't do that. The y value, the units on that are million dollars. And the units on this are million dollars per year. Now take a second and write a sentence that interprets both of these two um, values. So here's my sentence. It says in 2003 the average price of a two bedroom apartment in New York City was about 1.39 million and was increasing at a rate of 0.22 million dollars per year. So we have one more question to look at for this one. Okay, so is the rate of change in the average price of a two-bedroom apartment increasing or decreasing? So this is just like that last problem that we did, same question, and I want to see can you answer this and say why your answer is the one you chose, both algebraically and graphically. Okay, so give it a try, pause the video and give it a try, and then come back and check with my answer. Okay, so our derivative here is p prime of t is 0 0.0528 e to the 0.16 t. And if we're going from, say, t equals 0 to t equals 5 to t equals 10, the value of this e to the 0.16 t is going to be getting bigger and bigger and bigger because 
this number here, that's about 2.72, this is being raised by a larger and larger exponent. So our values are going to be getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and so we, we're going to have our slope is increasing. Let's look at this by looking at the graph. So we have our function in our y1. I'm going to change my window. I'm going to go from 0 up to 10 by 1. Um, y min of 0 looks good. Now our y max, remember for 2003 our y value was 1.33 million or something. So we're going to just, I'm just going to go 1 point up to 2. And then my y scale, I'm going to make that be 0.25. Okay, I could have also, instead of setting this window myself, I could have also gone zoom and then gone down here to zoom fit. Whoops, option zero here. And that would have built a window for me based on the x values that I had. Okay, so here we have our graph. And I'm going to put my graph here on the screen so that we can draw on it. And let's graphically say why the rate of change is increasing. Once again, we're going to be looking at our tangent lines. So over here, so here's my tangent line here. My slope is positive, but it's fairly flat, so it's not very big. As I move to the right, my line gets steeper and steeper. My tangent line gets steeper and steeper. So still positive but it keeps getting steeper and very um, to the point where it's you know fairly steep. So if we're going from something that's flat, that means it's not very big, up to steep, that means it's really big, our slope, those values, our slope is increasing. Okay, so that's it for this video. Come back and um, watch another one on another topic.